Hello, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. In today's video, I want to share with you the basics for prepping a canvas for painting. Part of the reason I call this video a pre canvas preparation for the painting curious was that I remember when I was starting out with canvases. I remember the first time I did a canvas project, I went, well, this is really intimidating. I don't know where to start. Did I prep it correctly? Am I doing this correctly? And so I wanted just to try to demystify a few of these things, give you a little bit of confidence. So if you're moving away from your art journal and you want to try a project on a canvas or a board surface, you know what to look for and what to expect. So when we're discussing canvases and boards today, I wanted to speak about just a regular canvas. These canvases are mounted on wood and they're stretched and they're stapled. And so this is basically your basic canvas. You can get gallery canvases that have thicker sides. Uh, there's, these come in a lot of different qualities, uh, sizes, and availabilities. Uh, you can also get these ones in a board form. I've actually used up all my boards, but I will show you uh, just a regular MDF board. Basically a canvas board would be canvas glued and stretched over a board like this. And this is a really inexpensive way to get started. Like this board was a couple dollars at the art store. And so it's a great way of just starting to get into maybe working on a surface like this. But if you're unsure about how good your project's gonna turn out, this is maybe a really great choice because you can still frame it and do other things with it. And then you have your more typical birch board. And there's a few different steps that you need to go in with birch boards over canvases, which I'll get into during this video. So to prime a canvas, you only need a couple things. You need, again, your canvas surface, a paintbrush of some sort, and gesso. So the gesso will absorb into the canvas, give you a nice smooth surface to work off of, but it has a little bit of roughness to it. And that roughness is what's called tooth. And what tooth does is when you're using paint, tooth will help the paint stick to the surface. So when you add gesso, you're basically creating a really even layer for you to paint off of that's gonna take paint really, really well. Another reason you wanna add gesso to your painting is because it provides that layer, it absorbs into the canvas, that will also save you a lot of paint. Uh, when I first started, I didn't use gesso and I went through a lot of paint. So to save yourself some money, to get better results and create more beautiful layers on your canvases, definitely put on a layer of gesso. And to apply gesso, you want to use a brush. On a canvas like this, don't use a tiny brush. Use a big brush. And I laugh because I've been in some classes with people who are newer to painting and they're trying to do a surface like this with a brush like this and they're just doing little bits at a time. And my attitude towards it is you just want to get in there with your brush and add as much gesso down as quickly as possible. This is not about perfect. This is about getting a nice even layer that's going to give you a nice area to paint off of. Use these types of brushes for details. Use these types of brushes for priming. So I want to show you very quickly how you can add gesso to a canvas to prime it. And if you're ever curious about what the color of the canvas is before it's gessoed, it's usually this beige color. And so this is a pre-primed canvas, but I always like to add just one more layer of gesso just to make sure I have an even surface, just in case when they were adding the gesso to it, they didn't do as good of a job as I had hoped. And you always want to use a large brush for this. So I usually try to find the largest brush that I have. I just add a little bit onto the surface. I tend to use a liberal amount on the surface, but you want to end up with a thinner coat. You don't want to have a really big, thick, heavy coat. If I left a bunch like that and just went like so, it would actually take a really long time to dry and you wouldn't get a nice, smooth finish that you're looking for. I'm just going to move this off to the side just so that I, I wanted to show you as an illustration about how, what not to do, but I really don't want that much gesso on my surface. And so once you get kind of a nice coat on top, I always like doing the edges as well. This way I make sure that I end up having a very even finish on it. And again, depending on the quality of your canvas, this might not be strictly necessary, but I've had enough trouble with canvases over the years of having issues with the final color look like that I'm not really willing to risk it anymore. I am more than willing to take an extra couple minutes just to add a little bit of gesso onto the surface just to make sure that I end up with a really even surface to paint off of. And the larger brush just makes this whole process a lot easier. The bigger the brush, the faster this goes and the more even your surface is. And if you think you might have bleeding along the sides, I sometimes like to pull over top like so. So that is basically how you just add gesso to a canvas. So if I'm doing a three to four foot painting, I will often use an easel to do this just because it's a lot easier to work on 
a more upright surface for it, but I generally find that whether I do it flat or on an easel, there's not a huge difference in how the gesso absorbs into the canvas. If you decide to gesso a board like this, uh, the only thing I would do that's different from gessoing a uh, canvas is basically add gesso to both sides of the board. The reason for that is the canvas is wrapped in a fairly thin board, and so sometimes you might run into, depending on the quality of the board, more moisture on one side will cause the, it to warp in one direction or the other. So by adding gesso to both sides of this, that's going to help keep the board a little bit more straight as you're adding your other medium. If you plan to prep a birch board, I would suggest adding a layer of matte medium before adding your gesso. What can happen with birch board is that they have natural chemicals in the wood and this can leach into your gesso. It can also leach into your paint and it can possibly shorten the life of your piece of artwork. So one recommendation I had when I was taking art classes is to take a layer of matte medium and just add it to your birch board. So this is an isolation layer between the gesso and the birch board and this will hopefully lengthen the life of your painting and it will also prevent you from having any leaching uh, between the birch board and the gesso. And I tend to do a little bit on the sides as well. So after I've added the matte medium, again just the same process as with the regular canvas. You want to go over it with some gesso and just add a nice thin layer. So now that I've dried my surface, what I did notice is that this is still not perfectly even. Uh, the birch board has some areas here and here that I'm noticing some texture coming through. So I'm just gonna add just another layer of gesso on top just to smooth it out. If you can get it to the level that you want in one coat, don't bother with the second. Uh, but for myself, because I've again run into a few situations in the past where I've paid for not gessoing the surface properly, I tend to like to go for more coats than less coats because if I'm going to spend quite a bit of time working on a project, I want really great results. And a smooth surface is part of that really great result. So using white gesso is not the only way that you can prep a canvas. You can also add a black gesso. Uh, I know Holbin has a whole variety of colored gessos. What I like to do when I'm working on paintings is start with that gessoed surface and then just add color on top. And the colors I usually use are red, yellow, or a strong magenta color. I dip my paintbrush in a fair amount of water because you want this fairly thin. And I basically just add a layer onto the surface of my canvas. And the, why I would do this is because I find that it adds a bit of luminosity to my painting. Sometimes when I use orange for example if i have areas that are yellow i can have a kind of warm orange yellow tone come through from some of the base coat and instead of working in really heavy layers i work in very thin layers to let some of that color shine through it kind of ties the painting in together and i find like it works quite well with the colors uh, one of the art teachers that i have actually was talking about in a gallery how even if uh, the painting showed no red on it that the red underpainting generally sold better in a gallery and there's something about the way the red works on a painting and it's an underpainting that really helps with the final look of the painting and so I use this technique a lot in pal painting where maybe a little tiny bit of the underpainting might show through. What I end up doing is instead of having white showing up I have this beautiful red color and so we get these little peaks of color as a uh, as people look at the painting. And I think that's just something that I particularly like and uh, is really easy for me to just add a little bit of variation to my work. So why should I take a technique where you can take this a step further? So I'm still gonna add a little bit of the red that's in my brush onto the surface and adding some magenta in here. And uh, this is a technique that I learned from one of my art instructors. And uh, it's a way of just breaking up the canvas if you're nervous about putting down your first strokes. Because sometimes, some of us will look at a, a plain canvas and go, well, I don't know what to do with that. I don't even know where to start. And that can be the difference between us actually painting or us staring at a canvas and deciding, oh, I'm not gonna paint today because this seems really intimidating. So it's not a super messy canvas, but it does have multiple colors going on there. I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 99% alcohol because that's what I have on hand. And I'm just going to add a few drips to it to my surface with a pipette. I'm gonna take a spray bottle and I'm just gonna spritz it out a little bit. I'm gonna add some more. And you'll see it's moving out. It's starting to bleach the paint a little bit and has let some of the areas of the surface come through again. And so this is a way that you can kind of mess up your canvas. So 
instead of having a perfect surface, you have kind of a blotchy surface. It has stuff coming through it. And I'm just going to blotch actually some of that off. Because I, I don't want this perfect. I want this messy. I want to be able to see color underneath. So now that I've dried this, you can see that some areas have gone way lighter and feathered out from the alcohol. And other areas where I kind of blotted and swept with my paper towel ended up having a different look. And that's kind of the point. You can go really well with this. You could add six or eight different colors. You could um, make it as splotchy as possible. The idea is that it breaks up the canvas. Instead of going, oh, I, ha I have a canvas. I don't know how to paint it. Where do I start? Instead, it's already a mess. You, make, you can't make it worse. You can only make it better. And so that's a way that you can really move past that creative block that you might have and be able to just start adding interesting texture and underpaintings to your paintings before you even get started. So I hope this video has helped demystify canvas preparation for you. And again, like with most of my canvases, I never just leave them white. I usually add a little bit of color just because it just breaks up that space for me and allows me to kind of get into that creative flow a little bit quicker. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I would also love to hear your comments on this video and what you've maybe learned about canvas preparation from this video or maybe some tips and tricks that you have that you like to use in your practice. I would love to start a conversation with you. So I hope you have a great week, that you take time for some creative self-care, and I'll see you next time.